Wealthy people invest purposefully, not just for the sake of investing. They, even education, they invest for education, not uh, necessarily an education policy. It's a big, big industry in the US. Let me come to my third type of portfolio. We have, we've done two. Lifestyle portfolio and security portfolio. The third portfolio is called aspirational portfolio. Aspirational portfolio. Anybody who has a lifestyle portfolio and a security portfolio in place, we consider them to have achieved a financial to have achieved financial freedom status. Get that? When you get your lifestyle portfolio and the security portfolio, you achieve true financial freedom status. And you can take that to the bank. I usually joke that the person who came up with a phrase, life begins at 40, he had this thing in mind that by the time we are 40, we should have achieved a lifestyle portfolio and a security portfolio. And now it's time to have fun. It's time to enjoy. I personally believe investment is not an end in itself. Investment is supposed to make us enjoy life. Investment is supposed to help us to have life in abundance. And that's what an aspirational portfolio it is. It helps you to um, it helps you to enjoy your life to the fullest with the confidence that you have laid a solid financial foundation for your future. That's important. I'm going to repeat that. An aspirational portfolio helps you to start enjoying your life to the fullest with the confidence that you have already laid a solid financial foundation for your future. And this this is key because we're seeing young people getting their first job, lucrative jobs, and they start with a sports Range Rover. You need to have you need to have a, you need to have a plan. Investment is like going to war. You must have a strategy. If you don't have a strategy, it's a zero sum game. Someone is gonna gain and you're gonna lose. So, an aspirational portfolio will help you to do, will enable you to do two things. Number one, you start upgrading your life. You start upgrading your life, meaning you acquire your second home. You get, you acquire a holiday home. You upgrade your car. You invest in more high-risk, high-return uh, assets. You upgrade your children's school, and so on and so forth. One of my clients really surprised me. He told me, Paz, I hate driving old cars. <laughs> and this was his goal. He said, Paz, I want to change my sports Range Rover every two years. Every two years. And I said, why not? Why not? If you've worked so hard, you've tightened economic belt, you've gone through your lifestyle portfolio, your security portfolio, those are the tough years. Now you can enjoy your life. Why not? The second thing that it enables you to do is to give back to the society. Life is not just about us. It can be that when we are done with our time on this earth, that the only people we impacted on are our families. We need to have our impact felt far and wide. So you're able to give to the, back to the society. It allows you to pursue philanthropic activities in a sustainable fashion. And this is something that is a bit 
uh, confusing in our African culture because we start giving from our first paycheck, which is fine. <laughs> but many of us are supporting our parents or have supported our parents and we've set ourselves up to be supported by our children. Now it's just a question of time which generation of children will refuse to support us. <laughs> so, a, a, an aspirational portfolio, the second part of it is that it helps you to impact the society. You're able to say, I'm going to support a particular children's home on an annual basis. I have one of my clients who told me, Paz, I'm passionate about young people with great ideas, but with no economic power to be able to commercialize those ideas. Can you help me to set up a portfolio that can help me to be able to disburse a certain number every year towards this, towards this noble objective? And I was, I was, I was, I was, I was very happy to, to help them uh, to do that. So an aspirational portfolio helps you to enjoy your life and to give back to the society. So that's the third type of portfolio. Let's go to the fourth type of portfolio. And this is the final portfolio that you, I believe everyone must have. And it's called a legacy portfolio. Say legacy portfolio. Legacy portfolio. Beyond your aspirational portfolio, the biggest question on your mind by then will be, how do I ensure that my wealth transcends to multiple generations? Speaking as an African, again, we do not have a good track record in this area. We tend to plan too short term instead of having horizons of hundreds of years. Quite often, wealthy Africans tend to leave their children fighting and plundering the very wealth that they spent their entire life uh, creating. So the legacy portfolio is meant to help you to answer two questions. And the first question is, to who should your wealth be transferred to? To who should your wealth be transferred to? The second question, how should it be transferred? Even though many of us assume that our children will be interested in continuing to run our business empires, most of our clients have confessed to us that their children are either not capable or they are not interested. The children are either not capable or not interested. And we found this to be an amazing discovery, even personally. I had this noble idea that I'm going to do this big thing and I'm going to leave it to my sons and my sons are going to leave it to their sons. But guess what? They want to chart their own paths. So we do not have to hold them to our, to our own paths. So, because of this phenomenon, a lot of our clans are preferring to ring fence their wealth within vehicles such as trusts and appoint fund managers like ourselves to professionally oversee, oversee them and instead pay out regular income streams to their children. Therefore, a legacy portfolio is key to ensuring your hard-earned wealth not only lasts for multiple generations, but also is transferred in the most tax-efficient manner. And I like asking many people, how do you buy assets? If you buy assets in your name, there are certain implications down the line on how those assets will be transferred from one generation to the other. So you've got to think about this thing from 
very early on when you're still building your lifestyle portfolio. So, those are the four types of portfolios. And now, you know the secret to investing like the richest 1%. What next for us? A journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. If you're not sure whether you are prepared for retirement or a sudden layoff from your job, I highly recommend that you start with a lifestyle or retirement portfolio. And I was seeing some very interesting statistics yesterday. A lot of us, when we get into employment, we think, we assume that we'll retire. We'll, we'll actually retire naturally. I don't know. What's the age of retirement here? 55? 60? 55. 55. A lot of us assume that we'll actually retire at 55. Statistics show that 56% of people in their 50s were laid off before their actual retirement date. That's interesting. Okay? And there are for many reasons because there is no there's no company today that is too big not to be disrupted. So companies are downsizing and that's a big reason why many people are not able to to get to their retirement age. And if you look at even most organizations today, if you look at the average age, the average age in Centum Group and Nabo Capital is below 30. So I'm one of the old guys in the office. <laughs> yeah? So guys in my office, they call me Mze. <laughs> so there are three things I want to, three action points that I want to leave you with. Number one, if you still have some time before retirement, kindly ramp up your pension contributions to NSSF Uganda. Or sign up other complementary financial products. As Richard correctly said, 5% is not enough. You cannot bank your entire retirement on 5%. You need more. So this is not a government project. This is a personal project. It's not an employer's project. It is your personal project for your own good. Number two, if you're retired or just about to retire, I'd highly recommend that you invest your lump sum in a product that gives you your, the best annuity income, which is passive income. Don't start a cow project which is very popular in Africa. You retire, you take your... I didn't see that one by the way on your chat. <laughs> but I know it's somewhere there. My, I watched my father-in-law retire and start a cow project. And at 70 years old, he would be forced to wake up at 2 a.m. in the morning to go and milk the cows. I'm like... This is... Terrible life. <laughs> I don't know what is it about us Africans and cows. <laughs> Another thing that you should not do, please don't marry a second wife. It means, my, you remember my problem of 8 million? You had another 8 million. <laughs> you have more mouths to feed. <laughs> I found these statistics, and uh, Richard can correct me. 98% of retirees run, uh, retirees, they, when, once they get their benefits, they run out of money within two years. Within two years. After saving for all your life, you run out of your investments within two years. 60% of retirees are still grappling with meeting their basic needs due to lack of passive income. So, invest your lump sum in the best income drawdown product that you can get. And we're happy to help you with that. The third thing I want to leave you with, don't stop at lifestyle 
or retirement portfolio. Work your way out all the way to the legacy portfolio. They are all interdependent. They are all cousins. They all work together. So, I hope I have changed someone's life today. And I want to ask this question as I finish. What do the richest 1% have in common? Please tell your neighbor. <laughs> Did they get it right? What do they have in common? Passive income. You guys are good students. Wonderful. So, we've done the four types of portfolios. I want, now you have no reason to fail. And I want to finish with this quote from Bill Gates. This is what Bill Gates said. If you are born poor, it is not your mistake. But if you die poor, it is your mistake. Because now you know. Thank you very much. <laughs>